Hey, what's up? It's Mitch here. I just finished Eng Week, and so that means I'm chilling hard today, but it also means I can finally spend some more time reading, which I've been doing not as much as I would have liked to have recently, but I've been doing it so. Um, so today's video is all about all the good books that I've been reading recently. Starting with this book, How to Manage Your Money Like a Fucking Grown Up. It's a South African book actually, written by Sam Beck Bissinger. Bissinger. The best money advice you've never got. Um, and I've read quite a, personal, quite a lot of personal finance books in the past and this one is a pretty good summary actually of how the South African economy works and how you as an individual uh, really can, you know, make money and take care of yourself financially speaking in South Africa. And it's, she's got quite a potty mouth in that. I mean, literally this chapter heading here is called um, a money crash course compound interest is magic and terrifying. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, it turns out that the amount you save is the single most important part of being a fucking grown up with your money. Um, and she goes on with similar foul mouthed epithets and that, but how to make money, but really good, um, from the looks of it so far, tables and calculations and uh, talk about taxes and savings and annuities and all the kind of stuff that you actually need to know to make money as a fucking grown up. And so, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Next up is The Fall of Hyperion. So I've been listening to this, uh, well, I did listen to it actually, and it was a really good sci-fi. It's the sequel to Hyperion, um, basically set in a future galaxy where there's instantaneous travel between different star systems and there's two different groups of humans, the humans and the ousters, uh, there's a war going on between them. There's some really cool sci-fi elements to it uh, with jumping between different uh, star systems with faster than light speed, hawking drives. Um, there's a big a kind of like demonic presence called the Shrike that's kind of lends itself to some of the horror elements in the book. Um, really good book. I really enjoyed it. I don't really, I didn't really enjoy the kind of horror um, fantasy parts of it that involved the Shrike and that, but a really good look at a future world that might happen one day with enough advanced technology and great heavy hard sci-fi book, which is what I enjoy reading. And next up is the Elon Musk biography. I don't know if you can see that, I think you can. Um, I read this ages ago actually, like a long time ago, but I read it when I was like, I think 13 or something and I wanted to reread it. And just finding out and reading about how Musk started some of the companies like SpaceX and Tesla or how he actually joined certain companies like he joined Tesla, he joined PayPal after founding X.com. Um, as a young person who might want to get into entrepreneurship one day myself, just reading about the scrappy start of businesses because obviously we only hear about most businesses once they're well established and doing really well. But hearing about certain, book, uh, certain companies um, how they were at the start and how they were in their early days in the inception and what I can do to be uh, a similar entrepreneur and businessman to some of the people mentioned in this book was really valuable. And obviously I'm a space nerd and <laughs> loving, it was awesome to read about how uh, Tesla and SpaceX got started back in the good old days. Next up is How Google Works. Um, so this was an interesting biography actually of two management guys who went and worked for Google for a couple of years and basically how Google differed from so many of the other companies that they worked for in terms of um, operations at the office, management of products and management of people. And it was a book, I think, more geared towards employers because there was a lot in the book about how you should put together a good team and how you should hire certain people and not others. But um, from a, an employee's perspective or someone who's going to be an employee in the near future for tech companies, really valuable talking about smart creatives and how for an effective tech company to work in today's day and age, you got to be really flexible. you got to be working in different manners to old traditional companies. You've got to um, give your employees lots of freedom and lots of flexibility to do things that they might think will be important for the company in 10 years time. Um, yeah, really good look basically at how Google works under the hood, how they make management decisions. I actually listened to it a lot in traffic, so I didn't get to take too many notes. But the very interesting notes about how Google, uh, right from its inception, operated differently to other companies and how they've used that to their advantage over the years. And so, good read. I listened to Ender's Game as well recently. I really enjoyed that. So if you're unfamiliar, it's actually a really famous sci-fi about a boy who goes off to battle school to fight or to learn how to fight an advanced alien species that, are, is, that is attacking the human race. And 
A lot of people said that the book is better than the movie. I think I actually enjoyed the movie more. I know, heresy. But the book delved too much into his sister and his brother. This is Ender Wigan, the main character. The book delved into his sister and brother's political exploits as well quite a lot, which wasn't as interesting or as adventurous as the main plot, as Ender's uh, story, where he was in space, where he was trying to fight the aliens, where he was learning about all the futuristic technology in the book. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed the movie more actually, but it was still a good read and it was nice to take a break from all the non-fiction I've been reading recently. And then finally, I've been listening to Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Um, psychologist um, wrote a book about how, how to live life and that. I haven't been enjoying it so far actually. It got recommended to me by several people and I've seen it in the bookshops for the past year or so and I thought I must give it a try, but I really haven't been enjoying it so far. In particular, just lots of nebulous writing about how Adam and Eve did certain things according to different religions and according to different religious texts, how the beginning of humanity and the beginning of psychology came about and how that still uh, affects us on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, as modern day humans, you know, we still live in dominance hierarchies and even animals like lobsters um, form dominance hierarchies from, their, from a very young age. Now humans also, interact within these dominance hierarchies and how that explains certain people's behavior and certain criminals behavior and why men chase certain women um, anyway that, that's what i've listened to so far in the book uh, it's just been a bit nebulous for my liking maybe i prefer more practical texts or more down-to-earth texts but it's been all right so far um, so i'm going to carry on listening to that and then i'm going to go and move on to listening to i'm going to go and listen to consider Flevis by ian banks because that's a heavy sci-fi that i've been meaning to read for a while so that's all the books that I've been reading and, well, more like listening to recently. Hope you've got a lot of good stuff on your to-read list soon, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers!